Hi. In uh, this video, I'll be looking at ways to test for autocorrelation or clusters in polygon data sets. So we have some polygons, in this case, Danish municipalities, they can't move. So what we're going to test for is whether or not the attributes establish clusters. So that's why I call, talk, call them attribute clusters. So we are not working in the attribute space, we are working in the physical space. What we're interested in are those municipalities both uh, high income clustered in one end of the country while those with a low income clustered in another part of the country. So that's the type of test that we'll be looking at. For doing this type of um, testing, there are basically two types of tools that we can use. There are global tools that specify whether or not there is a positive autocorrelation in clustering. And for one of the tools, it can specify if it's a high or the low values that are clustered. So we can use these tools to indicate whether or not there is some form of significant clustering. Then there's a series of tools that we can use to map the clusters, find out where they are. We call these local tools because they just look at a object and its neighbors or, or neighboring objects within a specific distance. So they are the local tools. So our global tools that test for if there is clustering in the data set, while the local tools can be used to locate these clusters. All of these tools have in common that they do a compare two matrices, the Y matrix and the W matrix. Um, the difference is that W matrix is the distance matrix. So it says how far are they in whatever distance that we are working with. It could be travel space time or standard distance, Euclidean distance. And our Y matrix measures how different they are in terms of their attribute space. So basically what the Y matrix does is that it looks at a object and sees how far it is from the mean value, the average value, and then it looks at its neighbors and sees how far they are from the average value and then compares that to how far they are. So if they are a object and its neighbors are far from the average value of let's say income. So we have a municipality and its neighbors and both the municipality and its neighbors are at say far from the mean average. So they have a high income and are close together. That would generate a cluster. If a municipality is a high and but surrounded by its neighbors with low, then it will not give a cluster. So this is the type of calculation that we are looking at. So the Y matrix is the distance in attribute space, while the W matrix is the distance in Euclidean or in travel time or some other time distance. Um, there are different ways of doing it. Um, the standard tools can generate the W matrix based on the geometry, such as inverse distance or squared inverse distance, or different values. Um, um, but if you need something more advanced than just distances, such as travel time, um, in Denmark we have uh, these two municipalities, although they are close together in Euclidean distance, measured distance, there is a well, large distance in travel time and the same goes for some of these places where we cross water. So it is, might be interesting to use a different tool than this, the Euclidean distance and there is a special tool for generating that type of matrices. Um, the local tools, they just, they, what they do is that they convert the Y matrix to a binary yes no is it a neighbor is it not a neighbor and thus look at the cluster of it. The automatic tools 
that generate for our weight distances, we have something like an inverse distance or a inverse squared distance. So that's what we have here, that the that our way my matrix, our distance, how does that increase as a function of our distance. We have a fixed distance band, so if every if a municipality is within let's say 75 kilometers of another municipality, then they are neighbors. So we have a one. If they are further than 75 meters, they are not neighbors, and we have a zero. So that would be a fixed band. We can ask for the nearest neighbors. So the 10 nearest neighbors are neighbors, or the five nearest neighbors, or whatever. Um, if they are sharing so they are touch each other on the edges and touches on edges and corners or if it is triangular data so data we can't calculate neighborhood or such as point data we can use the linear tri triangulation so basically create a um, teasing and polygon around each point and then look for the standard neighbor tools and then of course we can use this space-time window that we can generate is our specific Y matrix. Um, the math of it is basically, as I said, we are looking, the key issues is that we are looking at how different X is our attribute. So we're looking at comparing a neighbor, an object and its neighbors by looking at how different they are from the average. And then we are multiplying this by the distance of by the distance in the y matrix the spatial distance um, the primary part of this calculation is that it tries to normalize it so it does this one has the sum of the weights this one has the calculates the variance of our data set so how much variance is there in our attribute this one up here compares and compare generates um, the distance of our uh, y matrix and finally if you look at all of this part here what that does is that it normalizes this expression here to values between minus one and one so all of this part is really basically about finding a normalization factor for the distance element up here so that's the approach that we use in what we call the Moran's eye or the global Moran tool. Um, if we look at what we mean by clustering in here, so we have clustered if we have low values together and high values together. Um, if we are having objects with an uneven number of neighbors, some of Danish municipalities have only have one neighbor, the municipality of Frederiksberg. Then it's very important that you set what, what the option that's called standardization to row. So that, because otherwise it will be outweighed by municipalities with really many neighbors. So that's basically what we need to do. We need to remember that we want to have our reports. And um, if you look in our map, I have this data set here with the data principalities and I just go down and find my tools down here under my spatial statistical tools and we will be looking at our high-low and this spatial autocorrelation that's a Moran so this is a global this is a global and down here we have some local tools. They are the ones that map them. These there's test if they are there, if there are clusters, these can be used for mapping them. If we look at our spatial autocorrelation of the Moran, we can specify our layer. We will let's say we we'll look at average income. Okay, so we now want to specify our W matrix, our weight matrix, our spatial matrix. So how close are they in space? 
but you can give them different. You can talk about a inverse distance or a inverse distance squared. So we have all of these. Let's just stay to the inverse distance. And we know we need to standardize by row. Then the question is, how far out should we go before we say that there is no uh, correlation? When are they of no influence? So this is this value down here. Um, so we have our our band of distance bands that we're looking in. Um, if we don't have a idea of influence distances, let's say we know that people are willing to travel a hundred kilometers to work, so maybe in this case we should look, use a hundred kilometers as our parameter. But there is a tool that can do analysis of what is at which distance do clusters um, occur most um, obviously or well, most most significant um, but that is a bit of a data fishing so it's best if you have some um, ideas for what your distance threshold should be based on what you know about this topic you are working with so I say that well, people probably don't want to travel more than 100 kilometers so that's 100 and then a thousand because our mapping unit is meters so I'll ask it to do it within 100 kilometers and I ask it to generate my report that's important if you want to see something nice results and I'll say run it the tool will run and if I go to my uh, results I have this one up here that I can look at and I stand and have information down here it says that there is a p-value of 0 for this being random so it's not random there is something going on uh, and we have a Moran index of 3 indicating that there is a clustering if we look at the report we get this standard graphical tool here and we can see that we have as I said from the looking at the, our messages that we have a cluster data set and that the chance of this being random is less than one and we have this C score here it indicates our clustering value. So we have Moran Global says yes there is a cluster in this data set. What Moran can't say is is it because the rich people are clustered together or the poor people are clustered together. It does say that municipalities with a similar income structure are clustered. There is another tool that's called Getters Odd that can calculate our value for whether or not they are um, the high values or the low values that are clustered. So if we just look at this Getters tool, um, so we have our Getters Odd high low clusters, and we'll do our same data set with penalties and on income and a nice report and inverse distance and I have my idea that the influence should be of 100 kilometers and it will run the tool and if we look at our results we have a nice little report here saying that there is a clustering and it is um, that they are high clusters. The likelihood that this is high clustered. Um, so this is what um, our getter says that is our high values that are clustered and not the low values that are clustered. So the rich people are generating ghettos according to this. I've been talking about I have an idea that 
the inference distance would be 100 kilometers. That would be an appropriate value. Um, and that's people are willing to travel across Sealand or Fyn or whatever. So these are all approximately the distance of 100 kilometers from here to here. So that is why I say 100 kilometers is probably a reasonable travel distance and therefore inference distance. If I want to test it, there is a tool that is called incremental spatial autocorrelation that looks at at which distances do we have clustering occurring. So as I mentioned it is a bit of data fishing but we can go out and say okay given this data set where do we find clusters. So we go get in our map and use our here yeah, and we use our incremental spatial and we want to look at our municipalities and we want to look at our income and let's say we want 20 different values and we will start with a distance of let's say 5 kilometers and we want to increment it by steps of 10 kilometers So we'll go from five kilometers to two hundred and five kilometers in steps of ten kilometers. We want to report, um, and this one is a bit tricky because make sure that this is a folder you're putting your data in, otherwise um, you'll get the problem. If you are working with a a database and you try to save it inside the database then this will fail. So let's make sure it's a folder. Uh, let's say so it's a spatial increment report. And I'll run the tool. So now it's finished. It gives me a warning that probably some of my data set is outside. Uh, what is the warning based on? Uh, warning at least one. Oh yeah, that's because there are some isolated islands and things like that. So that's the warning of that. That's fine. If I look at my output report, we can see here that our C score, so how our statistics for how clustered they are, has a max value somewhere above 100. If I look, uh, it will say that 115 in my modeling here is the most significant value. So that's close to my 100. So I'll leave it more than 100 because I can say that that has a reasonable argument for it. But the maximum according to the spatial increment is 150 kilometers. The or the get its odd as I said can map and that's what we used before can map whether it's or not it's a high or the low values that are clustered. If you look at the local clustering, we'll have exactly the same tools again. Oh, well, that we'll have a variation of them. So we will have a variation of our RAN, and we will have a variation of our Autis or Gettys Odd model. Um, difference is that the Gettys can say for the high clusters and for the low clusters what is the significance of them. While the Moran can give us a indication of whether it's a high municipality, so a rich municipality surrounded by our riches, if it's a poor municipality, so municipality of low income, surrounded by other municipalities of low, a high one surrounded by low ones, or a low one surrounded by high ones. So they're a bit different in their outcome. They use the same. W and Y matrixes 
and they use more or less the same math but they focus on only looking at the neighbors so it converts the y matrix to a true false a boolean one saying whether or not it's a neighbor so if we look at the tools in our map we have our hotspot tools here so we'll start with our uh, get is all and run it for our data set so we'll look at our municipalities and we'll stick with our income uh, we'll have a fixed distance band and we'll have our uh, value of a 100 still as our distance element we don't have a rate matrix here so uh, we'll just run it look at what we have in our results we can go to our table of contents so we have hot spots but generally sealant has within this search range just a hot spot distant um, so high incomes in sealant with a high significance we have low uh, or very high significance around here and also up here while oh and Jutland is not really significant what it is interesting if we then say okay if we look at our tool and run it again but don't use a fixed distance band but just say a inverse distance so now we don't say okay Every thing within this search range is the same, but we'll be weighting our distances as a function of, or weighting our neighborhood as a function of the distance, and run the result our tool again. Well, we won't f find these set of big cluster errors because now we're looking at just a net. These are more neighbors than those are. So here we can see that the cl that the high high the high income cluster is specifically um, significant up here this is where we have a significant clusters of high income which is known as the rich parts of Copenhagen so not surprising um, if we look at our Moran tool so instead of using the orders we now use our local Moran and do it in the same data set our income and our inverse distance rating and a distance span of this 100 and standardization by row What this is able to say is that not as much about the significance, but it can say that we up here have low income surrounded by high income. So this municipality is low compared to its neighbors, has a low income. This one here is low, but all its neighbors are also low. And these areas here, they are high income, of some high income neighbors and then we have a single one down here which is a low income municipality surrounded by high income municipalities just like up here so we get different results from using the different tools we can use them for saying what type of municipality and typically we might be interested in seeing okay why are if we have these high low municipal clusters so why is a municipality performing different from its neighbors? That's typically an interesting situation to go and look at. Of course, these is maybe not the municipality themselves, but in general, the area that has a trouble with generating a high income. So that was this video on looking at our clustering of attribute space. Uh, using the Geddes Odd and the Moran tools as both local 
on Global Tools. Bye.